Good morning, church. Happy Mother's Day to fellow mothers. And I pray if the Lord tarries, we will celebrate many more years in good health and abundance and favor of God in the name of Jesus. So by the grace of God, the message for today is tied to recognize who you are. You know, it is so easy to be carried away as mothers. We are line holders. We are the only, we are the one taking care of the children, taking care of our husband. It is so easy to be lost in the midst of trying to do everything and not recognize our identity and not recognize who we are. Just because of the situation that surrounds us or what we hear other people speak to our life, you are not even good enough. You don't even do more as much as other people, and we listen to all those sorts that can make us to lose our own identity. But this morning, God wants to encourage us for us to redefine even our purpose, to recognize who we are. Praise the Lord. Our Bible passage will be taken from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. If I can have it. 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 4 to 10. I will quickly read it. If I can have it on the screen. To whom coming as unto a living stone, these allowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stone, are built up a spiritual world house and holy priesthood to offer, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, also, it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believed on him shall not be what confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious, but unto them who disobey, the stone which the builder disallow, the same is made the head of the corners of the corner and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed and verse 9 he said but you he says some of them disobey they disobey and to them that stone is what he says stumbling stone to them but he said for you for me and for every woman this morning, for every man listening, for every child listening, he said, but you and I, we are what? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that we should so what? For the praise of him which had called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And the last verse, he said, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. He said, but you, when you hear but, it means something has happened proud to that. Some people have disobeyed and they have lost the privilege, which gave room to each, to me and to you to be a partaker of that God's glory. He said, he said to us, what? People who have not obtained mercy, but now have what? Obtained mercy. It's the mercies of God that we have obtained that make us to be who we are. Mothers, we are celebrated today, but beyond all the celebration, I want us to define our purpose, to re know, reevaluate ourselves, and to be able to do what recognize. Who am I really? Who am I? What does God say I am? Who does God see in me when he looks at me? I want you to know that God sees you differently from how the world view you. It's just a perception. It's just the view of people. They speak some nasty words. They do some sort. Even sometimes people that you are even raising your own kids sometimes can be what? Can be very, very what? Disobedient sometimes and say some things that will make you to look at your life and think you are not even worth anything. But the Bible says in Proverbs 31 from that verse 10 to that, it says who can find what? A noble woman. Say to yourself, I am a noble woman. I am a noble woman. My price is far beyond ruby. Praise the Lord. And husband, if you are there, verse 11, say the heart of the husband, what? 
Trust, have confidence. Say to your wife again, I say I have confidence in you, in all that you are doing, in all that you have been. I am confident in your work. And God, above all, I want you to know that God is what? Confident about you, about all you're doing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So from the context of the scripture that we just read, he said, but you and I, there are four descriptive words. There are four things that describe you and me this morning. Mothers, recognize who you are. The first thing that describes you and I say that, but you and I, we are what? A chosen people. God elects you. He elects me to be a mother today. It is grace that qualifies us. He said that those who have not had mercy before, but now they have mercy. There are many women that are praying to be where you are today. It is the grace and mercies of God that brought us. We were once no people, but God made us what? His own people. Praise God. He made us what? His own people. And he went further to say, we are what? A royal priesthood. First, we are what? God chosen people. God chose you for a purpose. God chose you to be the wife to your husband, to be the mother to your children. God has a reason for not making another woman to marry your husband. He brought you into that relationship for a purpose. He brought you into the life of your children for what? For a purpose. And he said, you are what? You and I, we are what? A royal priesthood. Praise God. No, we have what? We are ordained for what? For the palace. We are ordained for what? For the palace. And that's why that proverb said, our price is far more than what? Ruby. You are important. I am important. So I want you to begin to recognize yourself, to say in this journey, I matter. In this journey, I am important. In this journey, I am not an ordinary person. I am a royal priesthood. I have been ordained to occupy a position in the high place. And this year is the year of the great turnaround, the year of coming up higher. If there's any woman who has underestimated herself or by what other people have said into your life and that has caused you to lose your identity, that you belong to where? To the palace and not to the, in the valley. I declare this morning that you will rediscover yourself in the name of Jesus. I said you will rediscover yourself in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And he went further. A chosen word, people. A royal priesthood. We are what? A holy nation. A holy nation. Israel is the nation set apart for God, of which you and I are part. We have been set apart for special what? Assignment. We have been set apart for what? Spiritual worship. Your motherhood, but my motherhood is a worship unto God. Being a wife to your husband is a word, worship unto the Lord. Being the mother that God has ordained you to be for your children and for children in the community outside the world, it is what? A worship, a holy worship. We are what? Holy nation. God calls us what? Holy nation. We are pure people. We have been redeemed. We have been elected. We have been what? Set apart. Praise God. Praise God. And the last one there, the fourth one, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own special word, possession. A woman, wherever you are sitting this morning, I want you to say to yourself, I am God's special possession. I am not an ordinary person. It doesn't matter what people see in my life now. I am made in God's image. And I know who he says I am. And that is what I choose to go with. Praise the Lord. You are what? You and I, we are special. Set apart. We are distinct from what? Unbeliever. From other world women. And it is because you are different. And I am different. And that is why God brought you into the home where you are, to make you a mother 
and a wife because there's something unique in you and in me that God sees that he knows that you and I, we are the right, the perfect fit, a woman that is fit for your husband, for our husband, for our children. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And why do we have all these qualifications, all these beautiful names identified to us, you know, attached to us by Peter? He said we are called from what? From darkness. You remember we were once no people, but now God made us people. We were once wretched in sin, but God, the blood of Jesus, washed us and make us to be who we are. He called us from darkness to marvelous light. We are in the light, and whoever is in the light will not walk in darkness, and that person will not stumble. So as women, as mothers that have been called, that have been chosen, that have been elected for the palace assignment, our assignment is for a special place. It's a special duty assignment. If you don't know this morning, I want you to begin to redefine it and know that my assignment is a special one. It is not for ordinary women. It is not for ordinary women. It is meant for what? Special people. The position that you and I occupy. It is designed. It is ordained for special assignment. To bring other people to what? To light. To bring our husbands to light. To bring our children to what? To light. And you know what? When you talk about it, coming from darkness and to light... Darkness was the past life that we live. And the light is the life that we are living now. Which is life in who? Christ Jesus. He said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new world creature. And all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. There is always a past. Everybody has a past. And we have what? A present. And there is a future. We are working for a future in the present. But sometimes we haven't let go of the past. And the things of the past lay hold on us, keep us bound, head us bound, hindering us from being the light that we are. If you just choose when you have been delivered from darkness to light, but you are still allowing the things that are in the past, the words that people have spoken to your life, things that you have seen in the past, if you're still dwelling on that, that will hinder us from what? Fulfilling our assignment, our goal. But I pray this morning, whatever it is that is in the past, that is still troubling our present and can eventually impact our future, I pray that this morning that the Lord will put an end to them in the name of Jesus. What qualify you and I to, be, to, to that, those titles, beautiful titles, a chosen word, people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. It is because of what? Life in Christ. Those identities are free. They are free for anyone to take. But it's only been taken by those who have given their life to Jesus. So if you are watching this morning, hearing and listening to this message, and you don't yet have Christ in your life, I encourage you to confess him as the Lord and your Savior. So you can be part of these chosen people. This part of what? A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A God's own, God's own special possession. Set apart for good work. So I encourage you this morning to do so and God will receive you into his kingdom in the name of Jesus. So to just throw more light on this message this morning, we will be dwelling more on the story of Esther because it's relevant for our assignment. We are what? We are ordained for the palace. And there's a woman in the Bible that was ordained to the palace, but she never knew it. She never recognized herself, you know, that one day she will ever be there. She never knew. Maybe some of us, we don't know our worth. We don't know our value. We have somebody who has been there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, Esther, the way the Bible calls Esther, because of time, from the book of Esther, her story is there. In chapter 2, you can find that that's where she came up to be. In chapter 2, from verse 5 to 23. So what did Bible call her to be? She was a Jewish word, captive. You can imagine a captive 
that is now a queen sitting in what? In the palace. Not only that she was a captive, but she was also what? An orphan. She had no mother. She had no what? Father. Praise God. But yet, God ordained her for a special assignment. So this is where we need to be able to reconnect back and say, I have a purpose. God ordained me to be somebody. You cannot fulfill a purpose without recognizing who you are. You cannot fulfill a purpose without knowing your identity. You have to know who you are. You have to know your identity. Then you will know your purpose. And it will be easy what? to fulfill your word, your purpose. She was a person of what? A lowly reputation. Probably some of you are looking at you and say, oh, I didn't even go to school. Because you didn't go to school, you're thinking you are not worth anything. You are not worth to be the wife of the husband that God has given unto you. You are undermining yourself. You are downgrading yourself because of situations, because of circumstances. I want you to learn the lesson that Esther was a captive Jewess. She was what? An orphan. She had no mother, no mother, no father. She was from a very what? Lowly reputation, lowly background. Living in Susan under the reign of King Sazi that we know as Ahasuerus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But God ordained her for something. But she didn't know it on time. But thank God. She had no parent, but God raised somebody. Behind every Esther is a Mordecai. Every Esther need what? A Mordecai. Every woman need who? A supporter. Every what? Every woman need a man that will support their vision, that will recognize who they are and help them to be who God has ordained them to be. If you move forward to identify, and even in her life, in her journey, you cannot get to the palace without overcoming challenges. She had her own challenges of which we are going to learn about. There are people that were useful instruments for her. Haman was one of them. Queen Vasti was who? One of them. Queen Vasti reigned in chapter 1, and when it got to 2, she was already gone. There are people that God has ordained to help us to identify who we are. To identify what? Our identity and to know our purpose and to know what God has ordained for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Can I have Ephesians? Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Can we go to 25? Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved what? The church and gave himself for it. Can you give me chapter, um, Ephesians? Can you give me chapter 6, 1 to 3? I'm going somewhere. We can't have a woman without a man and children. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on earth. Praise the Lord. Behind a successful mother is a supportive husband and obedient children. Children, wherever you are, hear me. You need to be obedient to your word, parent, to your mother. Support her vision. We may not have it all sometimes. We may go wrong sometimes, but accept us for who we are. Husband, love your wife. As Christ loved his own church, she may not be the perfect fit. You may not see her as the perfect fit for you. You may not see her as the one that God has ordained. You may not see her as what? Of a, a woman of value. But this morning, I want you to redefine your own purpose as husband, as father, that God has died for, Christ has died for, or redeemed you and said, love your wife. As Christ loved the church, Christ is the head of the world, of the church. Husband is the head of the family. And he said, wife, submit to who? To your husband. Praise God. You want support? Submit. Praise God. You want your wife to prosper? Love her. Trust her. 
have confidence in her. Children, you want your mother to be successful. You want her to live her vision. You need to what? Be obedient. Behind a successful woman is a supportive husband and what? And obedient children. Praise God. Looking into the situation of Esther, you know, she was a Jewish captive, we said. She was one among the, 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 the exile that, the that went to what? Babylonia, that Babylon. And when it was time for them to return, some of them still remained. You know, we might be questioning that, oh, how come these people disobey? They have been let go. They were in bondage for years. God has promised to bring them back to their own land. When it was time, they still chose to live there. You know, when I was studying this book, I now say, oh, sometimes we look at things as mistake, as error, as disobedience, whereas God can bring good out of it. God can do anything, anytime, anywhere, with any situation. Because without them remaining in that land, in truth and then, there wouldn't be what? Anything like Esther, anybody like Esther. And we wouldn't be reading about her story. A role model to all women. Praise God. So her story, going deep into her story, praise God. If you go back to that chapter one of the book of Esther, talking about the king himself, you cannot have a queen without a king. Esther chapter one, if you read it from verse one, he said, now it came to pass in, that, in, that, in the day of Ahasuerus. Can I have, okay, now it came to pass in the days of her high series, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over a hundred and seven, what, and seven and twenty provinces. Can we go further? That in those days, when the king, Ahasuerus, sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, in the third, in the third year of the reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of the Pasha and Media, the noble and the world, the princes of the provinces, being what before him. Verse 4. When he shewed his riches of the glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellence majesty, many days, even an hundred and four words called days. And when this day were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Susan and palace, both unto great palace both unto what and small seven days in the court of war the garden of king's palace time will not permit me to read everything but if you read further the spirit of alcoholism came upon him the bible said we should not be what drunk with wine but we should be what be filled with the spirit a husband a king that god ordained for the throne he got drunk and he requested his wife, the, the, the queen, Vasti, to come and show forth her beauty to the people. If it was only her, it would have been okay after Rod is your wife. But in the public place, a king asking his wife to come and display her beauty in the presence of other people. A thing of honor, bringing it into the presence of other people. Of course, what happened? We know the story. I'm not going deep down to read. Just bringing out some things for us to understand. But Vasti, she fears the Lord. She refused to obey the king. We talk about her as a disobedient woman. Some scholars, they give her a nasty name, a stubborn woman. They call her anything, you know. And we can read the Bible and say, oh, she was disobedient. Why did I read that Ephesians? Why submit to who? to your husband. So when we talk about submission, it's a very sensitive matter that we need to pay attention to. Submit to your husband when what they are requesting for is in the will of God. If what a husband is requesting you to do will take you to hell, are you going to listen to that or listen to the voice of the Lord? It's a very sensitive matter. She disobeyed the king to obey somebody. We have to disobey to, to obey. If you don't disobey the things of the world, you cannot obey the things of God. But this is not to tell women to be disrespectful to their husband. We need to look at the context 
for which this is used. A king calling the wife to come and show forth her beauty. She refused. Of course, what happened? She was what? She lost her position. A king that has not his own heart. A king that listens to the voice of other people. Are you a husband listening to the voice of others, to the dictate of others, how to treat your wife? This is a call to everybody. It's a call to women to submit. It's a call to men not to be what? Driven by worldly pleasure. Ahasuerus was what? A king driven by worldly pleasure. He wants to show his power. He wants to show his riches. My wife is the most beautiful. But whatever happened is for a lesson for us. She disobeyed. But God has somebody. What? For the throne. Probably God just used her to, to do what? To save the seat for the person coming. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I speak this morning to every woman that is not enjoying. That peace will come upon you in the name of Jesus. If there are people sitting upon your throne of glory, the Lord will dethrone them today in the name of Jesus. If there are other women planning, trying to take your place, the Lord will fight your battle in the name of Jesus. Praise God. We have Mordecai there. If you go to that same chapter 5, in chapter 2, from verse 5 to 8, that was when Mordecai issue came to be. You know, he was the one who raised Esther. Mordecai is the one. Can we go to 6? Six? 6. Who had been what? Carried away captive from Jerusalem with the captives, which had been carried away with what? Jehoiana, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. Praise God. Can we go to eight? You know, so it came to pass when the king commanded and his decree was heard that when many maidens were gathered together unto Susan the palace to the custody of Agai, that Esther was brought also unto the king. Esther get nominated to contest when the people encourage the king to go and look for wife, another wife, because Vasti disobeyed. It was Mordecai who raised Esther. He suggested, go and enroll, go and enlist. I'm speaking to the young women in the house today. I'm speaking to the young men, fathers to be, mothers to be. This matter is what? Relevant to today. A lot of time opportunity comes. We don't take it. God is speaking, this is the wife, this is, you know, this is your opportunity. You need to know when the opportunity comes and take it. Mordecai enlisted her and she went. And of course, she found favor. Mordecai was a kind man, a very humble, a very supportive man to Esther. Husband, what kind of support are you giving to your wife? Are you there to pull her down or to support her, to strengthen her? Esther had no parent, but somebody was there for her. You are the one that God has given charge to help your wife. And I pray that if any husband is lacking in supporting their wife, God will strengthen them this morning in the name of Jesus. So I'll go further just because of our time, just to go through the story. You can go and read the whole book of Esther and understand the story. So Esther's story begun to do what unfold when Vasti was what? The throne, and she got to the palace. So where, how did this journey begin? How did God take her to where she, 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 she was? The king get picker. They became what? Furious. Something happened. If you go to chapter 2, verse 22 to 23, the king's get keeper. They were what? They were very furious. And they connive against the king, trying to take, do something evil to the king. God is a God of order. And the secret happened to lead to who? To Mordecai. And Mordecai had told it to Esther, but Esther has not told it to anybody. Even in the beginning, Mordecai told Esther, don't declare your identity. If they had knew she was a Jew, something maybe they could have even killed her. She couldn't have even gotten there. Women, let's learn a lesson to learn, learn how to do what? Keep secret. Praise God. She kept the secret and things started going, you know. And those people at the end of the day, what happened? They lost their life. The king made a decree they should hang them, you know. 
But this, Mordecai wasn't, she, he wasn't rewarded for it. He said, if we are no war, if we do not faint in well-doing, we will reap. What you are sowing today that you have not reaped, woman, you will reap. Just be patient in the name of Jesus. Clue number two to Esther's success. So the fall of two, those two gatekeepers now brought somebody to what? To promotion. Hey, man. The very good man that I will say in the, in the opposite way. In chapter 3 from verse 1 to 6, 8 to 11, you read his story there. You know, they brought him to promotion that led to his word, his destruction. Promotion sometimes can be a, a, a pitfall for some people. If it is not handled with what? With wisdom. He got the promotion because those people did something wrong. He didn't learn a lesson that what happened to these people too can happen to me. When he got the promotion, he started misbehaving. He started misbehaving that, oh, Mordecai refused to bow to me. And he took his matter to where? To the palace. Planning. That was how the journey of Esther began. He took the matter to the palace. And the king, too, listened to him. That to write a decree to wipe out the whole thing. When the matter got to Esther, a restorer, a lifesaver, women, you are ordained for the palace to do what? To save life. When the matter gets to Mordecai too, that they want to wipe out their people. He cried. He went to the city place, crying and crying. Esther tried to do what? To calm her, but nothing. Eventually, what happened? Esther got to the throne. Mordecai sent a letter to her. Praise God. Praise God. Because of Mordecai loved the people so much and he didn't want any evil to happen to them. When Esther tried to comfort her in chapter 4, she refused, he refused to be comforted. But he wanted Esther to take a risk, which of course we know going to the king when you are not summoned. Esther was fearful in the beginning to go to the king. But when she summoned courage, Mordecai sent a letter to her that, you know, don't think you are safe in this place. If you, who knows for this reason, you go to this place. Who knows for such a time as this, you go out into the kingdom like this to save your own people. He said, if you remain quiet, that deliverance will do what? Come for the people, but don't think you and your people will be safe in the palace. And that was a wake up call to Esther. And Esther summoned courage. And he said, go and gather the people in chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. He said, and I will go to the king, which is against the Lord. And if I perish, I perish. Women, risk taker. We got to be what? Risk taker. I will go to the king. If I perish, I perish. But God did not allow her to perish. God already made the way for her. She asked the people, go and pray for me. And after the third day was done, he, she went fearfully to the palace, the word with favor and faith. God favored her, seen her faith. And the king, you know, the king of kings is always stretching his scepter to us. But we have a king, Ahasuerus, that you have to wait and do out and get permission to see. But we have access to the throne of base. So let's boldly come there all the time and tap grace. Women, when things get tough, let's tap grace from there. And Esther, what? got the favor of the king and he asked she asked for from the king if it pleases the king let me and Haman have what a meeting with you a banquet because Haman was already upset he wanted to wipe them out he even wanted to he made a gallow got an advice made a gallow for Mordecai which became his own eventually praise God Everyone preparing a gallow for you, they will fall into it in the name of Jesus. I said they will fall into it in the name of Jesus. Esther discovered her purpose in the peak of what need. In the tough time when her people was about to do what? The wipeout. But she didn't keep quiet, even though she was fearful. She went to the king. They had the first banquet. They had the second banquet. And that was where she disclosed all her identity, this is who I am. This man is planning to, you know, to, to do what? Wipe my people away. 
And the king responded. He said, whatever you ask, I will give even unto half of my kingdom to you. Esther asked. She took risk. She asked. And God gave the head of who? Haman to them. And she went further. If I may find favor before you, king, let the, verdict, the dead verdict against my world family, against my people, let it be what? Overturned. And the king responded to her. Praise God. The king of king will respond to you women at the peak of your need in the name of Jesus. The king of king will respond to you in the name of Jesus. We are life what? Savers. God ordained you. It's tough. You can't get to the palace without challenges. So the Haman in your life, don't look at him as a bad person. God is setting him up for his own dead. For what? For your vision to be unfolded. For you to identify, rediscover who you are. In rounding up, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to hold on to seven keys that I call the seven hours from this message today. Recognize who you are. Your assignment, its importance, and how urgent it is. Esther recognized, he said, if I perish, I perish. The second hour, release yourself to be used of God. Don't allow your past to push you down. Esther was from a lowly state, but she released herself. The Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the land. Recognize and listen to the people God has placed in your life to help you accomplish your vision. The husband that God has placed in your life, you know, you got to overlook some things so that you can get their support. You have to recognize the people that God has placed in your life, good or bad. Every behavior serves a purpose. We can make good out of what? Bad behavior. Praise God. Praise God. If Haman wasn't there, there wouldn't be any vision for Esther to fulfill. If Vasti did not disobey, there wouldn't be need for Esther to come to the throne. So we have to recognize people. And Esther, she didn't forget Mordecai. The Mordecai, what he did that he didn't remember. God caused the king to lose sleep. And Mordecai got his word. Reward. He got his reward that he labored for that he did, never got in the past. Everything you have labored for that you have not been rewarded today, it shall be granted you in the name of Jesus. The fourth, hour, the fourth hour, recognize your position, never give in, but trust God to see you through. Esther recognized her position, but she didn't give up. She said, go gather the people. Go and pray. When things get tough, women, pray. That is not the time to quit. That will take me to number five hour. The fifth hour, recognize your weakness and turn them to strength. Esther's weakness was what? Fear. Ah, I can't go to the king. I will be killed. But when she encouraged herself in the Lord and she had faith, she went and what happened? She turned her, her what? Weakness to strength. Fear to what? Faith. Whatever thing that causes you to fear, you need to turn them to faith today and let God act on your behalf. So shall it be to us in Jesus' name. Sixth one, recognize God as your source of strength. God is the one who has brought you thus far and me. We need to recognize that he's our source, he's our strength. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the last hour, recognize God has several others waiting in line. Just like God have Esther waiting in line for vastity to be gone. So we need to be very careful women, how we fear with our what? Our assignment with our spouses, with our husband. There's no perfect being. We are all work in progress. So we need to be able to do what? Know that if we decide to quit today, there are several others waiting to get, come and reap what we have sown. Nobody will reap on your behalf and on my behalf in the name of Jesus. Let's bow down our head in prayer. I just want you to talk to God and say, Father, from today on, help me to recognize who you have called me to be. Help me to shut the gate of my heart against every negative people around me, against every negative voices, O oh Lord, that want to hinder me from fulfilling my assignment. Father, Lord, shut the door against them, Father. Help me to discover myself. Let me recognize who I am, my assignment, my purpose here, and help me to run with that vision successfully in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day.